Hello folks, Jason Christman here. Boy, the weather has surely taken a change. For the last month, we've had uh, pretty much what you would expect this time of year, cold weather. Um, just a few days ago, I believe it was, let's see, today is Monday. I think it was last Tuesday. I woke up to nine degrees, uh, pretty dang frigid. But uh, it seems to be that uh, we're not gonna have a white Christmas. Instead, we're gonna have a little bit of a heat wave. So yesterday, when it was 54 degrees out, I went around and made some inspections, made sure everything looked good, make sure they had plenty of food stores, um, swept the dead bees away from the entrance, making it fully accessible now, and uh, everything's looking pretty good. Um, I also took time yesterday to install some brood minders. Um, if you're not familiar with Broodminder, Broodminder makes wireless sensors that you put in your hive that monitor the temperature and the humidity. They also make sensors that just measure the temperature. And they also make a wireless hive scale. Um, all of these sensors in the scale work off of, uh, Bluetooth and can be synced to any Bluetooth device, like your smartphone, your tablet, whatever it may be. So I've been using Broodminder for a few years now, and if you've followed me for long enough, you're probably well aware of it. Within the last few weeks, I have uh, set this nuke up here behind me with Broodminder. I got uh, two sensors and the hive scale underneath the hive. And I had problems with one of the sensors, one of these, this sensor here actually. Um, I put a new battery in it, put it in the colony, and within about two days, the battery was dead. So I replaced the battery. You know, I bought it from the dollar store, so I thought maybe their Energizer batteries just don't hold up as well. So I went and got some new other new ones. Replaced it again, put it back in the colony. Within just a few days, I'm back in the same position. Battery's dead. So I reached out to Broodminder. Um, you know, I work pretty closely with Broodminder. Um, Rich Morris, one of the creators, uh, I reached out to him on Facebook and uh, mentioned this problem and he said the humidity had probably got to the electronics and that's why it was shorting out. They had made some updates to this plastic casing that goes around the chip, which you can see inside of here. There's the chip right there. To keep the moisture from being able to get in. So he sent me a, a replacement of my temperature humidity sensor. He also sent me one of their new T2 sensors, which is the temperature only sensor. Um, within the last, I believe it's last year, um, Broodminer had an Indigo um, thing going where they were trying to get enough money together to make some new sensors at a reduced rate, and that's the T2. Um, you can pick up the T2 sensor for $30, so it's relatively uh, reasonably priced. Um, as were the temperature humidity sensor, these ones are 60 bucks. So th this can add up really quick. Now what I like about the Broodminder sensors is in the winter, I'm able to, to watch my colony and uh, without disturbing them. I can see the temperatures rise and drop. I can monitor their weight with the hive scale and watch the food stores go down in the winter time. Or in the summertime, you can watch when you've got a good nectar flow, you can watch it skyrocket, watch the weight just go up. Um, I remember a couple years ago, I monitored the uh, black locust flow here in central Ohio. And on a good day, they were bringing in eight pounds of nectar a day. So, yeah, that's pretty substantial. So, yesterday, I took and added my new sensors to another colony. This nuke right over here. So what this does now is I can compare one nuke's readings with the other nuke's readings. I don't know what that's going to result in. Should be kind of interesting. But what I've done um, for my Patreons, and uh, you have to go over on my Patreon page to check this out, and you actually have to be a Patreon to have access to some of my uh, content. And this Broodminder thing that I've got going on over there is one of those things. Um, and what you can do, um, if you're interested, if you contribute to my Patreon and become one of my Patreons, um, and you can go clear down to just giving me a tip in my tip jar or picking one of the other categories. That's totally up to you. Um, 
if you choose to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to go over to mybroodminder.com and you're going to be able to see what these charts look like from the broodminder. And I'm going to sync my devices once a week so that you can see how my bees are doing. And you'll be able to compare the faded nuke with the blue nuke. And that's how they're labeled on there. So if this is something you're interested in, I'm just throwing it out there. This is a way for you to see how Broodminder works without making the financial investment. To buy two of these sensors in the high scale, which is also known as the Science Citizen Kit, is I believe $275. So it can get kind of pricey real quick. And to do this on very many colonies is going to add up really fast. So this is just a way for you to educate yourself how Broodminder works and actually see the readings without spending much at all. So something you're interested in, you're going to want to watch this video and uh, watch me install the sensors, see how that works. And then if you, you are interested, go on over to my Patreon page, which is listed down in my video descriptions. It's also linked up here at the side and uh, check it out. You'll want to look for my pinned post at the top of my Patreon um, after you become a Patreon and uh, you'll have to follow the instructions in that post and then send me a message. It's all wrote on that post there, so, so there ain't any confusion. Also, in this video, I'm going to be using uh, something I just got that seems to be very, very handy. I used it yesterday while I was out here checking the hives, and I want to throw a huge thank you out to Kevin McMahon. Boy, you just made it, buddy. That is awesome. I don't want to give it away just yet, but uh, this device that Kevin McMahon is uh, selling is very, very handy. I can see how it's going to help keep all of my tools together and uh, no more losing the hive tool. So if that's something you want to check out, watch the rest of this video. One last thing I want to say here, um, I haven't neglected the mead video, I haven't forgotten about it. I have kind of put it on the back burner, but I hope to be ordering all of my yeasts and yeast nutritions here in the next week and get that video on the move. So don't think I gave up. I'm still working on it. It's just been kind of hectic and uh, things have been busy. So watch this video, folks. Okay, so here is the new Broodminders I just received. Here's the old one, the one that went bad on me. And here is the new ones. Now there's two different sensors here, and I want to explain. This sensor here um, is the more expensive of the two. This sensor costs $60, but it monitors not just the temperature, it also does humidity. This sensor is $30, but it only does temperature. Now, now they're both made a little bit different than each other. As you can see, this one's thin, like a bookmark, and this one has a little bit of girth to it as you get down towards the bottom. It's still no thicker than a quarter inch, so it works perfectly in bee space, but this one is a lot th thinner. Now the way these would work if you only have the one is you would place it just below the inner cover and any heat that rises this would read it. So I'm going to install both of these in one of my nukes and we'll be able to compare the nuke that I have set up now which is this one right here and the other one I'm going to place the sensors in is this one here. So that'll give us something to compare on mybroodminder.com uh, where you uh, get to read your measurements. Okay, since I plan to use both sensors, I am going to stick the one that measures both temperature and humidity towards the top and stick the other one in the lower box.
to turn it on, there's a little button here and you push it until the light flashes. After the light flashes, you're free to install it. Now this sensor is a little bit different to activate. You've got this strip here, which happens to be a sticker with the sensor number on it. We're going to pull this. That's going to activate it because the sticker was between the battery and the battery connection. Now we can pull the back off of this and uh, go ahead and label our sensor. Kind of contrary to get the paper off the back of the sticker. Okay, paper's off. And I want to go ahead and label the sensor. Down here where I'll be able to read it when it's sticking out. I'm going to fold the rest right around like so. And now as you can see, I can see my identification number for my sensor right there. I'm going to go ahead and place it right up here towards the center. I'm going to go ahead and see if this beetle blaster has done any good. And if you're looking to catch ants, I guess I did a good job. Yeah, there might be there is one beetle in there. Right there is one beetle. The rest is ants. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that out. And I guess since it's out, now I can push these frames a little bit closer together. Just like so. I only want to leave my number sticking out and you know just for my so I don't have any problems I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this burr comb off under the sensor there we go I'm probably gonna to have to do the same thing on the lid don't want to dump that on the ground so I'm going to dump that up on this other hive so I can sweep it into my hand and put the lid back on okay so now the lids back on both sensors have been added pick up this tape that I threw down from the back of the sticker and uh, we're all good here. One thing you can do is bend these down. So uh, it's probably advisable that you do bend them down because if not, what's going to happen is rain's going to land on here and leach to the inside. There we go, folks. So now we'll be able to compare those readings with this colony's readings. The only difference between the two is with this colony, I've got the Broodminder wireless scale, so we'll be able to see the colony's weight change, whereas that one, I don't have the scale. The scale alone, I believe, is uh, 150 bucks. If you're looking to, to buy the full kit, you actually get a better deal. You get the scale and I believe one humidity temperature sensor and one just temperature. So what'd you think? 
I tell you, the Broodminder, I find it very, very interesting. Um, I noticed just a couple weeks ago, my two sensors that I had in the Blue Hive, um, one of them quit working. The other one was working strong and very well. But the battery, see, when you uh, go to mybroodminder.com and you look at your readings, there's actually a reading for uh, the battery to tell you how good it is. And I watched it, I can't remember the exact numbers, but the battery life had dropped quite a bit. And then, for some reason or another, I guess the bees had moved up around the sensor, which created some heat. That brought the battery life back up. And you can watch the battery life come back up, and you can watch the reading for the bees' temperature go up at the same time. So I thought that was rather interesting that the cluster of bees had moved up around the sensor, creating enough heat that it rejuvenated the battery. Who knew bees could charge batteries? So did you notice Kevin McMahon's tool pouch? Very, very handy. I'm very impressed. I think this is gonna make beekeeping um, a lot easier as far as keeping my tools all together. Now I haven't exactly figured out what I'm gonna carry in it permanently, but the experiment yesterday, um, I threw my queen marking pin over here. When you buy this pouch, it does come with this queen cage. Um, Kevin's put a cork in the end and got it totally blocked off. So you can just throw your queen in here, carry her in your pouch until you're ready. Um, maybe you're making uh, queenless splits. You wanna take the queen out, put her in here till your splits are all made, and then you wanna put her back. Um, I also carry and get them out of here. I'm also carrying my handy dandy little uh, frame rest, which I've got a video on these, very handy. So I'm carrying them in here. And I've also got what, some little survival pliers type tool kit here. It's got, you've got your pliers, you've got wire cutters here in the back, it's got a knife, it's got screwdrivers, it's got scissors. So it just seemed like a handy thing to have with me. Will it stay in here? It's hard to say. We'll have to see how much I use it. And uh, I don't know, so far it seems like a good idea. Now this magnet that Kevin's put on here, extremely strong. And this hive tool here, um, quite a bit heavier than your standard red hive tool that most people use. But this hive tool does multiple uses and I really, really like it. And it sticks really well. Um, at no time yesterday did my hive tool ever fall off of the magnet. You've actually got to kind of give it a little twist to get it off there, the magnet says strong. But this just slides on your belt, hangs down off your waist. Whenever you need your hive tool, it's right there. So, very handy. I appreciate you sending me this, Kevin. Now, I did add a sticker up here that says, every hive counts, and it has a picture of a mite. That came from Broodminder. That wasn't on there when I got this from Kevin. So, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I'm gonna leave Kevin's contact information down below in the video description. If you're interested, reach out to him. I don't wanna quote the price right offhand. I should know it because Kevin told me, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're right around $43, I think, with shipping uh, here in the United States, but don't quote me on that. I'm thinking he said it was $35 for the pouch and $8 for shipping. So, but that's here in the United States. He will ship these anywhere in the world, but you'll have to reach out to him for the shipping. So, something I thought I'd throw out there. It was very handy. Thanks, Kevin. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I want to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, it's not too often we have weather like this during Christmas here in Ohio. So I'm gonna do my best to play in the bees as much as possible on Christmas. Um, and I hope you get a chance to enjoy yours, if not on Christmas day, maybe a day or two afterwards. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, then why the heck not do it now? Go down there and click on that little subscribe button and make sure you click the bell so you get notified when I release videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon, folks. 
hey did you know that when i'm not making videos here on my youtube channel i'm still sharing videos over on my patreon page and when you become a patreon you don't just get videos you get all the other content that i'm sharing for my patreons so it's something you might want to consider um i for one would appreciate it and uh i hope together we can learn something new about broodminder and the readings that it's putting out for us so thanks for watching folks